Yeah, what's going on? I figured I might as well um do this since uh, I'm stuck in traffic. <laughs> so this way I don't have to wait until I uh, get home and, and, and do this. So I'll do this while driving even though it's very slow. I guess what I want to talk about getting to Tariq Nasheed because he's starting to backtrack off of a lot of things plus uh, in particular his tethering situation I think he realizes that he's gotten himself into a lot of trouble plus I want to talk about his continued uh, scam type shit with these uh, donations but I've been listening to his uh, X live I guess you can call it it's funny, it's almost like Xbox Live, but <clears throat> I gotta hold this a different way. It might even end up sounding better for all we know. Uh, but he had a caller on uh, Come On. First of all, he had a bunch of idiots uh, call. <laughs> all they do is kiss his ass. Yeah, I love you. I, I love what you're doing. You're incredible. Because, you know, that's what these people love to hear. They're incredible. They're doing the right thing. And even with all the ass kissing that these people come up with, he still lands there playing early. But let a white man come up because he's looking for particular people. That's why he lands people's planes early. Now, some people need need their planes to be uh, landed early. But when it comes to this tethering thing, before everybody... That wasn't a black American. What's it? Damn, I hate when people behind you just keep on hitting brakes. Hit the people in front of you. Uh, before anybody that wasn't a black American was a tether. So he's been catching a lot of heat. So he's been slowly revising it. Which he always does. So now the tether they're the only people who undermine black Americans. They're not anybody that's uh, not a black American. If you're a writer for black Americans, then you're not a tether. But that kind of goes against the actual raw definition of what a tether is, which is basically somebody or something using something else for service or to get on or what have you. So, really, anybody that's a foreigner is a goddamn tether, if you ask me. But, you know, he has money that has to be made. So, he has to he realize this guy, damn it, I better start backtracking. Oh, I know what the other thing I want to talk about, too. Because I noticed, and I called him out on one of his lies one time on their assumed name, of course. I noticed that. My man be slick this in New York every chance he gets. Number one, he comes with the uh, we're always uh, most, you know, he and some of his cohorts or disciples because they'll say things like most of the black people in New York are foreigners. No, that's that's idiotic. You know, they say L.A. is a international city with a whole lot of foreigners. So, I mean, what the, what's going on out there? And I don't like the way he's subtly trying to come back with the East Coast, West Coast thing, even though the New York, L.A. thing. And he's not even from L.A. to begin with. Carpet uh, bagger. But he's trying to start some shit. Like he got L.A. to defend. And slowly uh, throwing West Coast hip hop into the creation. Trying to take away the Bronx creation. Trying to say it's from everywhere else. All black America. Which, again, that's more or less what I said because of James Brown. That's how you know he's listening. And, uh, <laughs> But. 
let's not say it's the Bronx. It's not the Bronx. It's everywhere else. Don't, don't get into that kind of shit now. Because like I said about Slick Rick and any Caribbean rapper, and that includes any Puerto Rican, when these people were in their countries, they weren't rapping, number one. They had to come to New York to get some style. Who do you think they get the style from? Because like I said when I was on Tarka Bay, most of these Jamaicans, you know, they're, they're, they're attached to uh, London in the United Kingdom. That's their first uh, spot to be. So how come they didn't have any style or no hip hop coming out of the United Kingdom? Huh? You name them. Dougie Fresh, Barbados, Slick Rick, Jamaica, UK, Heavy D, U, uh, Jamaica, Special Ed, since he's been making the news lately, Jamaican, and East Indian. Um, again, if they would have been where they were from, you wouldn't have style. They don't have style like that. I mean, Jamaicans got their own little style, but it's clearly Jamaican, like the little Jamaican dances that they do. You know, that's their thing. Well, if you want to call them dances, I guess you can call them movements. Uh, damn, now I got to turn this motherfucker off, man. I'm, I'm, I'm getting tired of this motherfucking traffic. I swear to God, I mean, they, they say L.A. has the worst traffic in the country. I, I just can't imagine that it gets worse. I really can't imagine. Especially as open as LA is, but even black people from the South, when they come to New York, they get a different style. Whether they came to do gangster stuff. Hell, even when they went to LA to do gangster stuff, they had a different style. But the style was localized to them. That LA gang stuff, and you do the research, a lot of that. Now, you want to talk about tethers. Influencing people, a lot of that gang shit and the gang looks, the the baggy uh, khakis and the uh, Converse or whatever the fuck kind of sneakers, Chuck Connors, uh, the rags and the button downs, all that kind of shit. I don't know if they still wear that shit, but the the nineteen sixties cars, all that kind of shit. Now that's Mexican influence. That's Mexican. Tariq Nashi don't want to talk about that kind of shit now. See, I do my research and history on shit. So I know what I'm talking about. So that's why you didn't see that style no place else in the country. But in uh, California, Los Angeles area in particular. Um, because we didn't have too many Mexicans. Until recently. I mean, these fucking tractor trailers, man. You got to stay in the fucking lane. What the fuck is wrong with you? I mean, believe me, I wouldn't mind getting hit by one long as I lived and I wasn't crippled. <laughs> Shit. But, um... You know, with that so-called museum of his, he keeps trying... He had a uh, West Coast hip-hop shit. I mean, they need to stop with that West Coast hip-hop. What they really mean is L.A. area hip-hop. I mean, let's just say that. Uh... And it seems like he's trying to inject them as pioneers. Now, we know damn well that wasn't the case. And it couldn't be the case. So he's trying to diss the Bronx. He's been taking some shots at New York for the longest time. Along with that Megan, Mouthy Megan, and uh, a few other people. And I'm, I'm going to just be, be real right now. So I can't take my sip of water. So people who don't like me taking sips, because I, I I got I got a uh, drive and I got to hold this. So people who don't like me taking sips, you should be happy. But um, let me let me be real. Some people might get offended, but ask yourself if I'm lying. Other people in other cities. Philly, LA, Chicago, Baltimore, 
Even though Baltimore doesn't hate on New York that much. Boston. Everywhere. You know, they want to hate on New York when they can get the opportunity to. Because look, look, New York is number one. That's why. Number one by far. Biggest city, biggest influence. I always tell people this. You can almost fit the population. Come on, man. Come on, come on. Get that shit straight, tractor trailer. God damn, I know it's nighttime, but god damn, you got to get that shit right. <laughs> I mean, shit. But, um, probably on the fucking phone. God damn, I mean, that motherfucker's slam on brakes. That's why these Mexicans they bring out here, they're not used to this type of driving. Now, that's why I'm saying, if L.A. got all that traffic, like they say, how come when these motherfuckers come out here, these motherfuckers don't know which way they're going? Well, number one, they're not from here, but still. If you know how to drive, you should know how to drive. Or at least know how to stop and go. In a smooth way. But anyway, New York is number one by far. You can, um, if you take the populations, and I, I, you know, I do my own research, but I was like, damn. I used to think New York, when I was a kid, I used to think New York and L.A. were basically tied. You know, for which city was the bigger or the better one. Then once I got some education, I was like, damn. I didn't know New York was number one by far. In other words, you could take the populations of Houston, Houston, L.A., Chicago, and New York is just about as big as all those cities combined now you take New York out of the mix then you got LA Chicago Houston I throw Houston in the top tier now because they their odd number population I think is 2.3 million so that, that's a population that'll put you in the in the top tier now because they, they're creeping on Chicago now Chicago got to start worrying and for people who don't know, Philadelphia used to be the uh, uh, the the fourth largest city, and it used to be the sixth largest market. Then it dropped down to the sixth largest city, but it kept the fourth largest market over Houston. And Phoenix, it's funny they just played in the uh, baseball game, Phoenix and Philly. I guess Phoenix beat Philly again. Because that's the city that knocked uh, Philly out of the number six spot. Or, the, I'm sorry, the number four spot. Then you got Santa and this guy, man. This guy, motherfucker, keep breaking up. I hate these nervous wrecks. Uh, damn. Uh, I mean, they could be new to driving. But God damn, why are you getting a fucking BMW X5 then? Shit. It's something else. But, uh... <laughs> These uh, so Houston's two point three million. Phoenix took out Philly. San Antonio's creeping on Philly again to knock Philly down even further. So I always wonder how they still maintain the fourth largest uh uh, uh market over Houston, which was a far larger city. But now, looking up the up, looking at the updated stats, now Philly has dropped down to the seventh largest market. So that's the one thing Philly always had, even when you know, other, you know, they weren't top tier, but market-wise, that was always top, one of the top uh, markets. Now it's gone down. Philly gonna slip out of the top ten after a while. They're gonna be like Detroit after a while. No offense to anybody from Detroit, but you know, at one time Detroit used to be over two million people, and it's still a major market. But I don't know what it is. The violence in Philly. I don't know what the fuck it is. But I know San Diego, San Antonio, these other cities. You know, they're trying to come up, man. And they like fuck this. You know, San San Antonio been begging for an NFL team any way they can get it. 
Because you know they want to compete with the uh, Dallas and Houston in state. So anyway, you take New York out of it. Then you're left with Los Angeles, Chicago, Houston. On those, those cities on their own. Spectacular, especially Chicago. L.A. is a gigantic, sprawling city, as they always say. But skyline-wise, uh, Chicago uh, and Miami. I'm, I was just looking at Miami, too. Even though that's mostly condos and not actual office buildings like most uh, cities with skyline. But nonetheless, it's still a powerful skyline. Uh, so you got, when I pause, that means I'm trying to concentrate on driving instead of hit, getting hit. <laughs> um, and this guy in front of me just, I mean, I don't know if it's the car doing automatic braking or what. This motherfucker's scared straight. I take that auto braking off because that shit is a nuisance. But anyway, so Chicago would be, if you took, took New York out of the whole mix, Chicago would be the most spectacular city in the country. LA, the skyline, like I said, they, they were never designed for, in a way, to have a skyline. <laughs> so everything is kind of makeshift. And that's why it's kind of the way it is. But Chicago, I mean, it's, LA is still impressive on its own. Like I said, there was no New York. And if there was no Chicago, I'm not saying LA would be number one, but it would be powerful on its own but nobody would probably be hating see people don't hate on the number two that's why you don't hear anybody hating on Los Angeles people hate on the number one sports teams you know they might like a, a, a team like the Kansas City Chiefs or the New England Patriots winning one or two Super Bowls but then, then god damn it when you keep on doing it and depriving somebody else's team from winning now the hate is on it's like when you're uh, coming from another country or going to another country you know you're from the United States or people in other countries what do they always say they can't stand the United States down down with America the UK they're jealous of the United States uh, other Europeans are jealous. Can't Canadians are jealous? What do you always hear? Uh, people, you watch a video on skylines and cities in the United States. It could be about U.S. cities. What are the, what are the Canadians always saying? Oh, Toronto is bigger than Chicago. They act like that's saying something, but we're not worried about Canada. And I always say this, Chicago is our number three biggest city. So Toronto, that's your biggest city. So don't go comparing the number three to your number one. Why don't you compare our number one to your number one? Or even our number two to your number one. And they always brag about the skyline. Now I can't say about Canadian cities, they do have some skylines. But that's because most of the people in Canada live in the damn cities. And most of their cities are <clears throat> bordering the U.S. They say it's because of climate and all that kind of stuff. Because you go the further north you go, it's uninhabitable. Uh, so you got, you know, people in other countries, they hate on the U.S. because the U.S. is number one. And then you got people in other states and other cities that hit on New York. Now, I, I, I will admit some people probably tired of hearing New York uh, all the time. New York this, New York that. But I always say that somebody has to be in charge of the world. Somebody has to be number one. If somebody's number two, somebody's got to be number one. If it wasn't New York, it'd be somebody else. And then you'd be hating on that town. But for Tariq Nasheed... The man who's not even from Los Angeles. Let me tell you something. And this is no diss to LA. 
Matter of fact, before I even get to what I'm about to say, you notice that San Francisco, because I always look at stats and shit. San Francisco is the most famous city in the Bay. And I think it looks cooler than Los Angeles. But that's just me. Maybe what I'm used to. But, because I was looking at where the 49ers play. It's like 40 minutes from uh, San Francisco. They say. Or 40 miles. Which is usually about 40 minutes. And, um, but I looked on a map. And it's closer to San Jose than it is to San Francisco. They should have just called that shit the San Jose 49ers. Shit. And quiet as it's kept, San Jose is a bigger city than San Francisco. But for some odd reason, maybe it's because of tradition, but San Francisco is still supposed to be the headlining city of the, the, the Bay Area. Now, San Jose is nice looking though but I think that's more uh, a city of rich people but no matter what it's a bigger city than San Francisco so let me just say to Tariq Nashi that's who I'm talking to on this one there are reasons why LA can never be bigger or take overtake New York has no, the number one city. Number one is three hours behind. I know some might say, okay, what does that mean? That means when it comes to news reports, all this other shit, you know, it's like when 9 11 happened. You know, it was like six, probably six o'clock on the West Coast. Hell, matter of fact, people in LA should be happy that they ain't getting none of that kind of shit happening. Shit, might be overdue. You never know what the hell might be. Uh, they might be working on for LA. So don't don't uh, go too far, Mister Nashi. So you got time zone. New York came before California was even a state. Of course, the population, all TV uh, uh, channels and networks originated here. Flagship stations are here. You know, like NBC, ABC, all that kind of shit. Uh, newspapers originated here. Most of them. Uh, foods everything you could think of the United Nations is here which kind of puts New York as a more important city than even DC in many respects and at the very least it makes it uh, a diplomatic city because you see like I saw today you know, the diplomats running around or driving around in their plates. Matter of fact, I saw a car accident in Manhattan today. One person car accident. Nobody, I don't think anybody got hurt, but the person was definitely embarrassed. So they were up here. I was about to get on the FDR uh, north. And some person, I don't know how they did it. Maybe they didn't see the divider or the island or whatever. And there was a traffic cop there. And then the person just runs over the island. Wrecks whatever the fuck is underneath their car. Then it's like they stop. Like they're waiting for the uh, traffic cop to take a report. But the cop was looking like, man, what the fuck? So then... I guess that person got mad and then took off again on the uh, island and went over some more and wrecked their car further. <laughs> I guess they were fucking embarrassed. You know all the traffic and shit in Manhattan. Motherfuckers were embarrassed like a motherfucker. 
get mad, but then, damn it, when you get home, you're going to be like, oh, shit. I just fucked up my uh, ride. <laughs> the only thing you could do <laughs> and you better hope that wasn't a rental the only thing you could do you could probably uh, call the insurance company and tell them damn I hit an animal or some shit like that but if the adjuster is uh, clever he'll, he'll see they, they usually they can usually tell the difference right away but you might might want to do that uh, anyway that, that was just a side note that I observed I was like damn when you hear people doing one car one person accidents and they're the only ones causing it I'm like damn there you go you see it right there but anyway so for me it's not a LA New York thing he keeps on bringing up LA area rappers acting as if they're supposed to get respect I guess because LA is number two but I think L.A. overtook Chicago. Chicago's the number two biggest city for the longest time. Sometimes it was Philadelphia, too. That's why I'm saying Philly fell on the charts. See, New York doesn't fall on the charts. That's the difference. And there's nothing to climb, either. <laughs> but Philly, that's why Philly has an envy, envious relationship with New York. Love-hate relationship, because... Philly used to be the largest city in the country used to be the capital at one time and then they got mad because New York was the capital at one time in its history and once uh, New York became the largest city there was no looking back no turning back so open up a little bit so You know, that's why when you go to Philly, I took a tour of Philly. I told you this before when I was on in a rush. We're like, hell, let's just take a damn tour bus to hurry up and uh, see the place. Everything they were talking about was what, what Philly used to be about. It used to be number one in this, that, and the other. And, you know, they try to compare themselves to... New York and Boston and try to say we got this bigger than Boston that bigger than New York and all that kind of shit I was like damn man New York and Boston what, what we got to do with this shit shit you just, just talk about Philly and what Philly has going on that's all like Tariq Nashi with this hip hop see he's trying to act like one of these tethers now by trying to inject this Los Angeles shit into the situation I mean just because L.A. is the number two biggest city, that doesn't mean whatever comes out of L.A. is pioneering. Oh, yeah, I forgot the other reason, too. L.A. can't be number one. Quiet as it's kept. But Hollywood got started by New Yorkers, by the way. <laughs> Small hats, yes, but still New Yorkers nonetheless. Uh, so right there, when... New York created what your town has been known for you can't win and the same thing with Al Capone coming out of Brooklyn so it, it, and house music being made by New Yorkers in Chicago I know people hate it believe me I, I understand that's why I try not to brag like other people do because I know people are like, ah, I'm tired of hearing this shit I understand it but the facts are the facts just like you Anybody in the United States, they brag about the United States being number one, being the most powerful and all this kind of shit. Now you see why New Yorkers have that swag. Because it's the undisputed. The skyline is undisputed. I mean, Philadelphia skyline probably won't even match the lower tip of Manhattan skyline by itself. And I'm not trying to take a shot at Philly. I'm just trying to give you an idea of what we're talking about. And as spectacular as Chicago skyline is, that too 
gets uh, dwarfed by Manhattan skyline, not even counting Long Island City or Brooklyn, and even the Bronx has the skyline, more mostly res residential stuff. Most people don't like talking about the Bronx. And you got people like, uh, what's my man, uh, Black Authority, you think he knows every goddamn place? I've been there. Who gives a fuck? I had never been to L.A. I got people in L.A. though, believe it or not. I just never been out there. But I do watch a lot of videos. Like I said, those auditors, a lot of them are out in L.A. and California areas. So when they go around doing their thing, I get to see, take a tour of uh, Los Angeles, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Hollywood area, Hollywood movie uh, situation, TV commercials being filmed, all that kind of shit. Plus uh, the ghetto, <laughs> you know? Get to see it all with them. Lady uh, Warrior, you know, I, I see that she's on that too. So, you know, she knows what I'm talking about. But um, that's just the way it is. But as far as the L.A. hip hop. Yeah, a lot of them were doing it in the 80s. But like I said, I was listening to that mixtape. I hope this motherfucker ain't sleepy. I hate when motherfuckers. This is a fucking big ass truck on the side of me. And then motherfuckers ahead of you. Don't open the fucking shit up. Going slow. They don't want to give you no fucking room to make a fucking move. Hate that shit. Yeah. But, um. You know, in the early 80s, and, and I was listening to this mixtape, uh, Busy B versus Kumo D, the, uh, the full version. You know, they had a rap contest. And there, you know, there was a guy that came down from Miami. Uh, you know, you, I think that was 82. I don't know if I mentioned that on that Taharka Bay or not. But so people were rapping from other, you know, other states. They were trying to get involved. Now I ain't gonna say my man was a pioneer. If you want to say that, hey, you can say that. <laughs> I don't know his name. But I did hear some other names on there who eventually came out with singles. Like Dougie Fresh and Tricky T. But I know some people like Tricky T. Who the fuck is that? Look him up. Uh, and there's another thing too. You come on a freeway uh, or, or a parkway. Motherfuckers are scared straight going slow as fuck. But you have to start speeding up. And then when the merge comes, I got to fall back so I can get up get up to speed because these people are scared straight. And I know there's some fucking Mexicans. God damn. See, now they, I hope please don't come in my motherfucking lane. Please don't. So I hate that, man. Get get where the fuck you're trying to get to. And if you're scared, just, just fall back. That's all. <laughs> I swear, one of these days I'll, film, I'll try to record again. And this motherfucker wasn't even going my way. going to try to get my motherfucking... I hate people. If you don't know how to fucking drive, the best advice I can give you is the, the usual advice. Look, that's 34 minutes. That's how long that fucking traffic was. Best advice I can give you is the advice that people have always given people. Stay in your own lane. That's That's, that's one of them. The other is if you don't know what you're doing or you're scared straight, don't get in anybody's way. Don't do that. Just, just, just get to the right lane. And I know if you're on the freeway or something like that, people get scared getting in the right lane because they're like, oh, shit, people are merging. I'm, I'm scared straight. I don't want them coming. So you try to stay in the middle. And you don't want to stay in the, you don't want to be in the luck because people are harassing you. <laughs> but goddamn, you just gotta understand, man. Let's get out of people's way. Now I understand it because I remember how you know. I'm sure we all know how it was when we first started driving and shit. <laughs> Scared straight, especially when you first start driving on your own. 
with nobody in the car with you. You know, in the beginning, like, yeah, I got this because you knew somebody was in the car with you that might give you some advice. Even though, in hindsight, you realize, damn, they ain't no shit. But, um... Smells like some pizza or something. But, um, you gotta understand, man, people gotta, uh, you know, just, just get out the way. Don't aggravate people. That's how crashes happen. Then at nighttime, it's even worse because people can't really see and shit. Anyway. The L.A. thing. L.A. rappers. I don't have a problem with L.A. rappers. Even though I got my opinions on skill levels. But I ain't going to give them right now. Because that's not what this is about. Come on, man. Get the light. Keep it moving, man. I don't understand, people. If you got it, go. Just That's another tip, too. Just follow the motherfucking rules of traffic as they put forth. As they put the shit forth. Then you won't have any problems. If you got the uh, right away, don't go because you're scared. Saying, "Oh man, I, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, fuck, I'm scared. Uh, this person knows how to drive better than me, so I'll just let them go first, so I can see what they do." <laughs> we we all know how how it goes. We know how it goes. <laughs> now, here's another one. This motherfuckers backing out the parking lot. Just get the fuck on fuck you waiting for man just you go and then you uh let them take their time is that is that motherfucking simple there's another thing when i'm talking about people being scared but again i don't get pissed anymore i I mean i'm talking pissed now because people aren't thinking but i don't get that road rage over the shit anymore because number one that's another thing people experienced drivers need to do too they need to stop um trying to scare the hell out of people who are already scared to death because because they might uh be new to driving don't 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 do that don't do that (laughs) because that's how people can get killed because people will get nervous like a motherfucker and panic (laughs) so don't do that especially since we talk about new york and la and you know cities of note damn sure don't do that in a city where people are visiting (laughs) trying to look at the sites while they drive which is another thing I can't stand like I said when you cross that Kosciuszko Bridge believe me I had to take a long time to figure out how that said pronounced and I dare somebody to spell that motherfucker but anyway that's a breathtaking uh view of Manhattan and I know people in New Jersey might disagree because they think they got the best view they got the best view of the overall city but not of Manhattan of its, on its own I could have sworn I made a video talking about something, some of this kind of shit it might have been that one I didn't put up because I swear some of this shit sounds familiar <laughs> but um you know people stop slow down and start looking and shit now I understand this shit is spectacular, but goddamn, you just gotta uh, you gotta you gotta learn to be cool, man. Worry about the driving first. Don't worry about looking at nothing else. Even a girl with a big ass. For an inexperienced driver, you take your you could take your eyes off the fucking road for literally one second, and that will be all that is needed for you to get into an accident. Matter of fact, it was on the uh, White Stone Bridge the other day. Motherfucker rear ended a uh, tractor trailer. Their car. One of those Hyundai, uh, whatever the hell smaller one is. Rear ended the tractor trailer. And this shit was left smoking. Crumpled up and smoking. That shit is total. I don't know how it happened, but obviously we can we can assume <laughs> that they weren't paying attention to what the fuck was in front of them, took their eyes off the road to look at the phone. I always say this, you, you ask yourself a few questions. Is what's on the phone more important than totaling my car and coming out of my pocket with money or even getting crippled or killed or burned? 
ask yourself that question. I know I ask myself that question every time I'm driving. Now, don't get me wrong. I'll still look at the phone, but, you know, my skills are at that level that I can do that. Now, I don't text and drive anymore like I used to. I don't know why this phone is just not as sensitive as it once was on the keyboard. I don't know what the hell it is. I wiped the shit down, but I don't know what it is. But anyway, let me finish up on this Tariq Nashi. Um, I don't like taking him taking shots at New York every chance he can get. See, taking shots, that's not going to change anything. Mr. Nashi now I just switched sides and I'm holding it like I used to hold it. So we'll see. I don't know if the sound changes or not. If it does, then maybe I'll start holding it the way I was holding it just now. That's not going to change New York's position. <clears throat> of course, all the banks, everything you could think of is in, in New York. Or other disciples like New Jersey, Connecticut, Long Island. Now, I say state for state. Texas and uh, California got New York beat. Because New York doesn't really have another major city. And I don't count Buffalo. I'm sorry. But California got a whole lot of major cities. Big cities in California. Texas got big cities. But what New York does have is the undisputed biggest one. So... <laughs> You know, New York has the Yankees, top of the line. L.A. has the Lakers, top of the line. Boston has the Celtics, top of the line. Chicago's Bulls may not be top of the line franchise, but they got Jordan. And if they ever should win another, you know, uh, if they ever should win, I'm, I'm going to say this first. If they should ever win another title post-Jordan, I'm waiting to see if that can ever happen. Because we kind of have to see that in order to get over them. Maybe they don't want that to happen, but it is what it is. But, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I, I like looking at sports history and watching those YouTube videos. But I swear to you, <laughs> the Chicago Bulls, I think they were out. I think they first came out in 1963 or 65 or some shit like that. But I swear to you, every time they look at NBA history and talk about the ABA, NBA, and all that kind of shit, I swear to you, before Michael Jordan, I never see or hear anything about the Chicago Bulls. And I've been dying to know why. I'm like, damn, it's like, without Jordan, they don't talk about him. You don't see him in highlights from the 70s or 60s or nothing like that. That's why I kept wondering myself to myself, damn, when the hell did they come out? You know? BMW. So the LA New York thing, we kind of have to stop uh, dealing with that kind of thing. Especially when he's talking hip hop and so called tethers. Now you're talking about, now you're trying to, and, and all this Tupac shit that's been coming up again. Oh, that's what one of the callers were talking about on his uh, live. He was talking about trying to insinuate Tupac could have been a tether or his father or one of his parents could have been one. I guess he's trying to argue that a lot of black Americans, people call black Americans, might have a uh, Caribbean parent. And you know what I always say? Stop trying to be down. And I also didn't like that Nigerian calling up with, with all that nigga shit either. I think he's trying to insult, trying to be funny with that shit. Trying to sound hood. Oh, my parents are Nigerian. Motherfucker, if your parents are Nigerian, so are you. Hate when people say that shit. My parents are uh, from this country, not me. 
How do you think you got here? <laughs> but anyway, man, we, it's, it's dangerous shit that Tariq Nasheed is doing. With the, the, the sneak disses on New York and trying to push up Los Angeles into the hip hop thing because every time hip hop comes up, they always talk about Ice T and NWA or people might ask how come they didn't easy and all these people didn't come up. That's another time period. That's not pioneering. And Ice T is a fraud and an actor. NWA that was a phony ass group. Now, I always, like I always say, I wasn't always crazy about their songs. Their songs are all right. More entertaining than some critical hip hop. More, you know, because I, I know they went over the top and shit with all the shit they were talking about. And I did love the quality of their videos. That's the one thing that you want to talk about with LA and the hip hop world had over New York. And they should have had it. I said this in the old video too. This is what L.A. should have had over New York when it came to the music videos. Because they're in Hollywood. So this shit better be tight. And that's part of the reason why I think they got played on MTV more. Aside from some behind the scenes shit. It's because the L.A. rappers, they had some Hollywood quality music videos. And where I'm, I'm talking. I'm in the '80s right now. Compare, I hate to admit it, but it's the truth. Obviously, I'm parked now since I'm talking louder, <laughs> stronger without worrying about getting hit. But um, you look at '80s rappers, New York rappers. We had the better songs, hands down. Better rappers, hands down. Anybody who says otherwise, they're lying to themselves. <laughs> That's why the greatest rappers of all time is always New York. I don't give, I don't give a damn that Eminem ain't on, on my goddamn list. But I got L.A. rappers. Yeah, I told you when I was on Psychopathias that time. I told you my opinion on some of the L.A. best rappers are. That's kind of uh, don't get the credit that they should get. Like the exhibit, you know. Every time I bring him up, people are like he's all right. I'm like all right, god damn. And then they bring up Raz Cass. Raz Cass was like uh, uh, it's my man uh, Cannabis. You know they they like way over the top, trying to do too much with the shit. Sometimes you got to keep it simple. It's like when you listen to a rock group and somebody's playing the drums, going too much and doing too much shit on it. To the point that the shit just is, is, is not listenable. Sometimes simple is better. So, but New York rappers, you look at MC Shan videos. And it's, it's not to say that all New York rappers have weak videos, but they, they, they were weak. Because most of the hip hop classics from the 80s. The songs were classics. But the videos, not all of them now. Dougie Fresh, I think he has some nice looking videos. Uh, I guess you could say LLE, he had quality videos. Uh, one Hit Wonders, some One Hit Wonders had some nice videos. But for the most part, you know, they had low budgets, so they had to film them on stage, or even worse, <laughs> use a video camera instead of film. I let you do the research on the technology difference. And I just say video, especially in the 80s, had a, a maximum resolution of 480 lines. So if you have film, that's why you could see videos in HD or 4K if they were truly remastered in 4K. Matter of fact, you want to see a truly remastered in 4K video on YouTube to see how it really looks, not the fake upscale one. Look at Atlantis Morissette's videos. When I saw those, my jaw dropped. I said, this is how you remaster 
a music video. The shit, I had to re look at the date again to remember when that shit came out. I said, this motherfucker is 30 years old. I said, God damn. But the shit looks like, not even look like it was filmed yesterday. The shit looked like you seen it live with your own eyes. And you forget how she is aged. <laughs> if you ever seen her lately. I said, damn. What the fuck is taking? See, they, they, uh, you, you watch YouTube. A lot of them say that they remastered the shit. They ain't remastered the shit. They just upscaled the shit. You can tell a remaster. If you watch those Atlantis Morissette videos, you'll see what a true remaster looks like. Man, they need to get on them all. I think it was the George Michael video that, don't you know, it's Christmas time. I don't think that was just him, but that was another 4K remaster, a true remaster. You'll, you'll know it when you see it. <laughs> but L.A., even the corniest rappers, though, they had the better videos. Hand, hands down. I don't know what their budgets were for the videos, but whatever the fuck the budgets were, if, if it was the cheapest budget, the shit always was the shit was always tight. Great cinematography, nice storyline. The shit was professionally edited. <laughs> The rappers, I couldn't say that they were the greatest, but God damn it, I couldn't deny the goddamn quality of the goddamn videos. That that's 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 in my fact. You want to throw something in there for LA rappers? A contribution to the hip hop game? Throw in the quality of the goddamn videos. Like I was telling that psychopathius, even that old school uh, LA rapper. Above the law, I, I I looked at their videos again. Is it above the law? It could be above the law. I'm not sure. One of them died, so whichever group that is, uh, I think it is above the law. I was trying to see. Okay, did I miss something with these guys? Uh, were, were they better than what I thought? No, they're still not better than what I thought. Because I, I didn't think much of them. But again, the videos told the story. The videos were high quality. And that's still what I thought. Even Young MC. Strong videos. MC Hammer, not from L.A., but he had strong videos. Even before he really got big, big. Uh... Tone low. You know, Ice T even. <clears throat> you know, even if they wanted to have a gangster persona showing guns, weed, smoke, all that kind of shit, killing, nudity, you know, all the debauchery you get out of the hood because of that serious Hollywood production, which I'm not gonna lie, is usually white guys on the production of the, of the videos. They had that shit tight. And, they, and any other Illuminati type shit, they also made sure to throw that kind of shit in there too, by the way. But they had they had the videos. But Tariq Nashi, you got to stop this shit. The microphone check shit. I don't like you doing the usual shit, trying to grab some money when you already had the shit paid for and, and done. And, you know, just trying to get the money up. Uh, that's a scam. Some people say, no, he delivered. He already fucking had it delivered. Now he's scamming you to get paid up front and what and recoup any costs and still ask you for money for the fucking museum. So that's not cool. This tether shit trying to put it on New York. People, let me tell you something else too. The Caribbean is basically on the eastern seaboard of the U.S. for the most part. Caribbean, black Caribbeans in particular, they usually go to two primary places. Miami, because it's closer. New York, because it's the top city. 
But I heard that there's a lot of Haitians in Massachusetts. There's a lot of Haitians in New York State. Spring Valley comes to mind. You know, there are other Caribbeans that, of course, you got Puerto Ricans, of course, and Dominicans. Uh, now, some people might say, well, Puerto Rico is a part of the country. Technically, it is, but Puerto Ricans still fly their flag around like this another fucking country. So, as far as I'm concerned, they're from another country. <laughs> Speak another language, shit. Oh, yeah, now, let me, and before I end this, let me make a comment on that Fat Joe. See, Tariq Nashi, see, he's not used to the Northeast and Midwest dealing with Puerto Ricans and Dominicans. So that's why he's used to, he's used to Mexicans. So every time he talks Latinos, he, he's talking from their perspective, those Mexicans, Chicanos. See, those are people who weren't really from around here. We only saw them on TV. They don't have nothing to do with no foundation of hip hop. At all, even the development of hip hop at all, because they weren't around here. We're talking Puerto Ricans, Dominicans. Now I could throw, like I said, you could throw in Mr. Magic, who's Panamanian. I didn't know it till he died, and I was like, God damn! They don't try to claim him. You want to claim a, a, a Hispanic? You claim him. But since they're not claiming him, I suspect that they're not claiming him because he is clearly black. That's why Fat Joe talked about, I grew up with blonde hair, blue eyes. First of all, you got green eyes. And he talked about the blonde hair and blue eyes. But he didn't talk about the fact that his skin's not white. And his big ass nose and big ass lips. He ain't talk about that part. <laughs> that part wasn't unusual in the Bronx, was it, Fat Joe? <laughs> and he is down with the Illuminati because I remember when he lost that weight and he was on CNN. I was like, why is he on CNN? Of all places. Since when they give a damn about some Fat Joe? Just like Quavo. Cousin gets killed, now he's in the White House. Same old thing over and over. That's why they su suppress the videos on YouTube. Because everybody was getting educated, so they took them all down. And I see that these auditor videos, too, that I love, is good entertainment. You also learn a few things, too. How the cops trick you and uh, trick you out of getting information, and they're legally allowed to lie to you and uh, ask for your ID. They can't demand it. They can act like they're demanding it by saying, you got ID, man. But he's still asking you a question when he says, you got ID, man. Even if he said, let me see your ID. And that's on the borderline of demanding. But he's still asking, let me see your ID. Most people don't realize you don't have to show a cop your goddamn ID unless you have committed a crime or they suspect you of having committed one. And they got to articulate that, as they say. Cops just can't come up to you and say, man, let me get, get, get your ID out. Matter of fact, I think, I think they probably can say that. And you can say, nah. A lot of people don't realize you can say no. You can say no. Nah, I, I got to show you my ID. Now, I told you I did that one, one time. I was sleeping at a uh, hotel parking lot and cops came up. Talked about uh, everything okay? Where's your driver's license? So, what do you mean? I didn't get pulled over? <laughs> I said, oh, I see you want me to leave. Okay, fine. And I pulled over the fucking rest. The man can't just fucking... I guess not on private property, I guess, but I said, fuck. I ain't, I don't pull, I'm not that pulling over on the side of a road person. I'd be damned. I ain't doing that kind of shit. But that's what those auditor videos do. I see, I think YouTube may demonetize many of them because they're not even calling themselves auditors anymore. Now, if they can't get paid because they're getting paid, they can't get paid. I can understand not wanting to get arrested or 
roughed up by the police <laughs> if that money ain't coming. You know? Now, all of a sudden, you're dealing with a different situation. But, and that's, again, earlier, like I said, you, you see L.A., some do it in Michigan, they do it all over the country, but you get, you get a tour, and you get entertained. So, but Tethers, immigrants, black immigrants, they're in Houston. I, I still don't know what it is in, in Houston that Africans keep, Nigerians in particular, keep going to. You got the DMV, you got the uh, Ethiopians. Believe me, when you see them continuing to go in a particular area, that means that they got something going on. You can't tell me that there are no black immigrants in the L.A. area. Tariq Nashi. I remember when Sayonetta went out there, you had Jamaicans out there doing the same hustle that they do to us out here. Brethren. Me brethren. Butter. All that kind of shit. Selling the Bob Marley t-shirts, the, the incense, the wearing the dreads, acting like uh, their culture is our culture, all that kind of shit. You knew they had to go to L.A. at some point in time. You, you know, they, they're in Chicago. All these fucking immigrants act like they have a right to come here. Like, it's, it, I just say we need to leave them alone, especially those Jamaicans. Tweet now she obviously went way overboard. And on the job shit, you know I mentioned that shit a long time ago. He gets these stories for me about how they undermine you under the job. He just repeated the story that I told from actual work experience. Now you ask yourself, when is the last time Tariq Nashi worked in the office before? But I told you about my situation with the Jamaicans in the office in the corporate world. How they always bring up race to bait you into talking about race or something controversial, but usually race. Then they start saying, oh, I just hate these white people. Hate them. They'll say some shit like that to get you to go along with the shit. Then after a while, they'll go report to the white man. Oh, man, I was... Uh, Offended by what he, the man say. He said he hates white people. You're not supposed to go around hating nobody. Don't hate boy. <laughs> uh, that's why. No, that's another reason why uh, Tariq Nashi can't do a good Jamaican accent. Because not used to him. <laughs> not saying I'm the greatest at it. But I'm just saying. Uh, but. That's what they do. Go to the white man. Act like they're heavily offended when they set the shit off. Get you out of there. Bring their people in. That's why I can't stress enough. Anybody on the job, not just the Jamaican. When they start talking race, religion, sex. You can even say you could throw in politics and sports. But if you want to discuss politics and sports, I guess you can. But race, religion, and sex never engage in those conversations. No matter how, if the person's laughing at you or making it seem lighthearted or talking about a movie, don't even nod your head in agreement. Even if you're nodding your head to say, okay, I, yeah, I, I get you, but I'm not worried about that. Don't nod your head in agreement because they might show the video footage back and say, yeah, he, he was agreeing. Don't do that. If anything, say, I got to go back to work. If you're afraid of offending them, then always remember they, they're working against you. It's just like Hispanics or anybody else. They're always working. Italians, they keep Jews, they keep bringing their people in. And if they keep bringing their people in to somebody who are, who's already in a particular place, and they're not hiring anymore. They, they got to get rid of somebody, right? Just got to keep that in mind. I learned that shit. 
it's fucked up. One Jamaican guy, he's like saying something to the effect that because he was he, he did lift weights, he had a little bit of muscle. He's like, yeah, you can't beat this. I was getting uh, baited. I was like, well, you want to put that to the test? Because <laughs> I had to tighten the back down. I don't give a damn about your muscles because I proved what I could do against guys with muscles in the past. So that is new that muscles. Bruce Lee said boards don't hit back. Muscles don't fight. <laughs> muscles, muscles are just for show. But when it comes to time to whipping some ass, that's a different situation altogether. <laughs> Like I said before in other videos, though, it takes a lot of people. It even took me some time to overcome getting uh, to stop being afraid of muscles. But <laughs> but that was the setup. Because I, the reason I knew that is because I saw how he interacted with white people. Skinning and grinning. Hamming it up. Cooning it up. I said, damn. That's when I said, let me leave this motherfucker alone. Because I see, I see where this is going. That's just but one episode. And it's not only that, it's in person. Every time a Jamaican come, I don't know why they target me. I don't look Jamaican. Some of them trying to figure out if I'm Hispanic. But they always start off with some black shit, some race shit, race talk. Whether it's in a store, on the job, or any place else. I'm like, what's wrong with these people? Why? Usually, they're looking to set you up. I told you that time when that lady was acting up in the store. Tariq, now, she stole that story, too. Lady was acting up in the store on a, uh, uh, trying to return something. And she sounded like she just came out from Jamaica. And she cut the line. No, the white lady was trying to cut the line. And then she was screaming at her. Oh, you cut that line because I'm black. Boom, la clot, and all that kind of shit. I'm like, why she got to say this shit in our name? Why, how, come, how, come, how come the lady wasn't cutting the line because you were Jamaican? That's what I'm saying. All the negative shit is in our name. So that's where you got that shit from. You got that shit from me. These are stories he stole from me. These are my real stories, I'm telling you. I don't make up stories. That's why I got a million of them. <laughs> That's the problem I had. Aside from every time you see a Jamaican uh, on YouTube, whether they're from the UK or not, they always speak about us as if they are us and we are them. My people. Uh, what we did. What the white man did to us. The slavery we suffered through. In the United States, not the United Kingdom, in the United States, all that kind of shit. I'm like, man... Shit gets on my last fucking nerve. And shit went way long. <laughs> but, um... You know, we know Tariq Nasheed is a coon agent, but... What he's starting to get into is kind of dangerous. He might be trying to... Or they might be trying to use him to set up another East Coast, West Coast type of shit. Which, again, if you do the knowledge, it's really just bad boy death row. Uh, but we got to stop that. We got to stop that. Tariq Nasheed, you got to stop that. The microphone check. Again, I don't know the quality of it, the length of it. But that might be the only one of his that I could say probably needed to be made. Even though he obviously, when he made it, he obviously had it in his mind before he even started talking about it. And I'm not one who says you have to be from New York in order to make it. Like he said, he's a, uh, you know, if you make movies or documentaries, whatever the fuck you do, if it's well researched. Now, well researched isn't necessarily taking somebody's word for shit now. Because these rappers are re revising history. <laughs> To make themselves more important. But if it's well researched. You know. That's fine. But he does try to throw in some West Coast shit. Or. Tries to minimize. New York by trying to say. Oh well it came from this that. we Listen we know. 
black Americans, let me tell you this before I close this out. You cannot say, well, black people came from the South to New York and helped bring black American culture to New York without saying the same thing for Los Angeles. <laughs> so that's why you got to stop that shit. Stop it. My mother and her sister is clear as day. We can I can attest to this shit right now. Both came from the South. My mother went to New York. The other one went to Los Angeles. So now what? I mean, come on. That's why I got people in Los Angeles. Just never been out there. <laughs> but they've been out here many times. So that's what I'm saying. Mr. Nashi, you gotta you gotta stop this shit. You wanna concentrate on the tethers? I I I I could actually support that, but make sure it's the Jamaicans and the Nigerians, because those are the motherfucking main pains in the asses. <laughs> Nigerians don't have shit to do with us, but they're definitely tethering. We, they're not us. We're not their people. That's why Tyron can attest to this when we go on certain channels. That's why the Africans always relate to the Jamaicans. Even in my personal life, I've always noticed that Africans relate to the Caribbean, but not us. Is it because they're immigrants with accents or because they look more African style? Every time I run into Africans, you know, they're not sure. They don't know. I, I'm not saying I don't look half white. Because black people certainly know I'm black. And they don't think I'm mixed or anything else. But when it comes to these Mexicans and these others, you know, Arabs and shit, you know, they stare wondering, you know, you know, what's going on? <laughs> and like I said before, you let me grow a beard. Those white style Arab females, they, they looking at me like, is he one of our people or what's going on? But got to stop that, Tariq Nasheed. Uh, I'll watch the microphone check. Hopefully it's, it's detailed. Hopefully, hopefully he'll have clips. But, you know, this shit isn't usually... It's not like uh, even History Channel level or, you know, one of those strong British documentaries or some shit like that. It is usually more or less like a higher quality YouTube video where uh, they're just talking about some shit, just like I'm talking about some shit. But the people he has in it is cool. See, on that Michael Wayne TV, I always told, uh, wrote in the comments like uh, Coke Rock. Better stop bullshitting and get his motherfucking story out before he be, he becomes a, a, a fable in hip hop history. You know, because if, if you don't assert yourself with that shit, other motherfuckers are going to say, oh, that was me. Just like in business, music, uh, movie, whatever, Thomas Edison, whatever the fuck happens. You know, there's always some McDonald's. <laughs> I don't know if you know it, but the people, the guys who invented McDonald's, they uh, innovated fast food. The McDonald's wasn't big when they had it. They sold the shit. And the guy who bought the shit took the shit to the next level, to what we know today as McDonald's. He did that. I forgot the guy's name. That's why I'm saying he. So the guys who actually created McDonald's missed out on the main shit. <laughs> because they didn't know what to do with it, but somebody else saw what the fuck they were doing and they knew what to do with it. It's the same thing with whether it's hip hop, your job, somebody on your job. If they see that somebody's weak, they say, you know what? They not doing the right thing. I got an idea what I could do with the shit. Diana Ross and the Supremes. <laughs> she was, she, you know, they all looked at each other as friends trying to get on. 
But Diana Ross is looking at them like, oh, well, I see a weakness in them. They want to be friends. It's about business. So she said, fuck that. I'm going to make sure I shine and get, get all I need to get. And she was slinging pussy to grown men like Barry Gordy. And she knew she can control them. Which, for a fucking teenage girl who hadn't even finished high school. Now they say, I, I heard stories about Mary Wilson messing with guys. And I assume, you know, you know how it goes. So Diana Ross, I don't know how she learned to sling pussy to manipulate uh, older men in the business world, but she did. She knew <laughs> what made them tick and what made them uh, motivate. She got what she got out of it. She did fuck her friends over and the other Motown roster people because other people in Motown, they got the same stories about her. <laughs> but she... Like Richard Roundtree, if she dies today, she dies a legend. She's the last Supreme left, not just out of the three. Well, you know, there were a couple other singers that replaced her or work and replaced the. Uh, no, I can't even remember the name, always happens. The one who died, uh, the light skinned one, those two are still around. But as far as the when it was a what was it, five member group or four uh, female group, those members are gone, as well as the Mary and uh, Flo. So Diana Ross is the last one around, and she just happens to be the main voice of the Supremes. It's just like um, the Beatles. Uh, you know, they had the drummer Pete Best. You can see videos on YouTube. They kicked him out various reasons. They said he just couldn't do it. And he had the right time in and all that kind of shit. John Lennon said they used him because he had the uh, equipment. And we could rehearse at his place. So, you know, his shit is worse than the other Supremes in a sense because... He actually, I just learned this recently, that he actually recorded or started recording Beatles Cuts demos. And they got that shit recorded with him playing the drums for shit that became Beatles classics eventually. They didn't like his drumming. Then they, that's when they said, we got to bring Ringo Starr in. And Ringo Starr ended up playing that shit. And then they blew up right after that. Even though I did read in the United States, they didn't really get too many hits at first, like they got in their own country. But then they blew up overnight, and Pete Best was like, God damn. I was right there. They let me go before that, and now they're the biggest motherfuckers in, in history. <laughs> That's fucked up. But Paul McCartney, when they came out with that anthology, he did... And it's the good thing their original manager who ripped them off. Small hat, of course. Uh, and then the subsequent manager's a uh, small hat. Klein, that Alan Klein guy. Paul McCartney did help out Pete Best when they came out with that anthology. He put in his shit, his contribution as a Beatle and the fact that he was an actual Beatle and actually played with them on record, uh, on a recording. So he put those on the anthology and put some money in his pocket. Millions. Even though it was like 40 or 30 some odd years later. That's good. See, at least you're in the history books. Like people who like the Supremes, they like looking at those early members who were there and then they backed out. Even with the Temptations. That, I think his name, Roderick, I think, with the heirs. You know, the more you research, the more you can find cuts where his voice was heard. Edric, I think his name. I don't know what the fuck his name was. But uh, <laughs> the guy who hit Eddie uh, uh, Paul over the head with the bottle. But you can find he, that he was actually on records, early records. And the more you research, the more you realize they actually did have early records with that lady. And even with Motown. But they didn't do shit. But they're there. On YouTube. 
you do the research, you can find it. You know, members back out because they're like, man, this shit ain't happening. I ain't getting no money. And then next thing you know, they blew up. But the Supremes, you know, that took a while, though. Even after the other members backed out, they it still took them a while to blow up. But once they did, got to admit, I think they had 11 number ones. And their number twos outshine a whole lot of people's shit, too. It's crazy. But anyway, we got to understand that we got to stop this madness. So that's why I'm talking about with this hip hop shit. This microphone check with this shit. Some people don't want to, you want to make sure that you don't get left out of history, especially when you start getting into your 60s and close to 70s. See, Melly Mel, he's like Little Richard of the hip hop. <laughs> Melly Mel makes sure people don't forget about him. Some people call him arrogant. He is. He, he'll admit he is. He, he'll say he got a right to be. And I appreciated what Little Richard did, especially once white people try to claim rock music. At first, I was like, when I used to see Little Richard when I was young, I used to say to myself, why? Okay, yeah, you're an early rock guy. Why do you keep saying it everywhere you go? I didn't get it. I'm the emancipator, the originator, all this kind of shit. I didn't get it. Then I find out Little Richard had a, another uh, influencer. I didn't read up on that guy, but I guess they're trying to pull that guy out of nowhere. And that's another guy. That's another example of a person who may not have spoken up or been able to sp uh, speak up. And Little Richard may have stolen his style. <laughs> I got to read up more on that guy. A sculpture or some shit like that. But um, even if Little Richard did steal his style, that was a black man. So, hey. Another funny black man, but a black man nonetheless. But Little Richard spoke up because if he didn't speak up all those decades after his heyday, he would have been lost to rock history. And they would have been saying, Elvis did this. Uh, what's that guy? Uh, rock around the clock guy. You know, they were always started with them. And you'd be like, Little Richard, who the fuck is that? Just like that other guy, uh, what was his name? William, something Williams. He was down with Little Richard too. Uh, he had that song, Slow Down. Girl, you're moving way too fast. He's a pioneer of rock and roll, but he was a gang member, gangster, and a, and a drug dealer. Forgot his name. Look him up. He was down with Ike Turner too, selling drugs. I mentioned him before. I got to come stumble across these guys, but you can't, you don't have to stumble across Elvis and white people. I can go on and on about that particular topic, but Elvis stole his look from black people, as you all know. Practically every hit he made was written by or performed by black people first, usually both. And I always wondered about Elvis's jet black hair, but blue eyes. I used to say to myself, man, how the fuck does a combination like that take place? Like blue or green eyes. And then I looked into it. And lo and behold, Elvis actually dyed his hair black because he admired black people that much. <clears throat> was trying to emulate because he emulated the clothes, the the moves, the try to get the the voice and everything. He didn't want him, he was blonde, so he dyed his hair black. Now, of course, he wasn't going all the way in and getting afro and shit, but he dyed his hair black. <laughs> I still find life with the white man so very intriguing. They cannot stand us, or at least they train other people to not stand us. They say we did nothing. Then you got coons like Chief X, and I know he listens too, who go around cooning it up. Must be the crack pipe. Say we never were shit, didn't do shit, never will be shit. If that's the case, you might as well commit suicide. Because that's what the white man tells you. You repeat it. So, because of that, they hate us. They've been trained to hate us and make sure that we don't get ahead. We don't do anything. But yet, 
not only do they get influenced by what we created, but they try to be us. They try to emulate us. Just look at all the white boys with the hip hop gear and the speech. <sighs> it's unbelievable. You hate somebody. You don't want to be them, but you want to be like them. You want to even look like them. But you want to hold them back. I guess because they know we're great. God damn it. <laughs> to anybody else that's a hip hop pioneer that's black. Got to tell your story. Because if you don't tell your story, who will? Because I used to be that type of guy who, will create, well, you know how I am now. I used to create, innovate. Some people steal my ideas and shit and get credit and shit or money. I create talking points on YouTube coming from my experience. Motherfuckers are getting paid, getting recognition and blame. <laughs> and then when I come talking about the shit, which I never stop talking about the shit. People who have no idea who I am say, oh, you trying to be like Tariq Nashi. You're a Tariq Nashi follower. No, the motherfuckers are follower of me. But see, I told you before he was going to steal my style because my style was different. My talking points were different and anybody else's talking points. Then he will co-opt them, take it over. And then as soon as I try to talk what I was talking already. Then people say. You're copying Tariq Nashi. You're a follower of Tariq Nashi. I knew what happened. I knew that there was nothing I could do about it because he's controlled by small hats. And they got the money. They control the media. And that's what I was telling somebody that that JFK author about the. Uh, or conspiracy theorist, rather, about the uh, MLK, how they put him out. The conspiracy theorist may be a, a, a small hat for all I know. I don't know what the guy looks like. I did do some more research on him. But uh, with that, damn, we're at an hour and a half. God damn. Guess I'm not making no steak and cheese club uh, subs. It's 8 o'clock. I don't want to eat that at this time. But if you do make steak and cheese subs, god damn it, I'm telling you. I don't know what else Swiss cheese is good for. Maybe just turkey and cheese subs. But you got to put something else on it. To give it a boost. But when it comes to steak and cheese subs. Or pastrami. Roast beef. Swiss cheese. Is the way to go. It just has a perfect counterbalance to. I guess the saltiness of. Uh, roast beef or pastrami or. Um, steak. Also don't put too much salt on the steak either. Because it. It just doesn't taste good, but that's a perfect counterbalance. Swiss cheese. So with that, oh yeah, before I say I'm lucky I just remembered. I give credit to where credit is due. I like to thank, even though I thanked them on the last video, I like to thank the American Riflemen for the contribution, financial contribution. Thank you. And I thank anybody else who is thinking about it. So with that, I'm out.